here in this video we will see a problem on calculation of polar moment of inertia for inverted t section here is the question which we have now it is given i'll write down in the data an inverted t section so the type of section is inverted t section has the following dimensions flange is 200 mm into 12 mm and web is 10 mm into 350 mm so roughly if i indicate that first of all since it is an inverted t section so i am going to draw the diagram first in a rough manner now this is the inverted t section flange is this portion now if it would have been t section then this flange would be on the upside now it is on the on the doubt downside because it is inverted t section and the dimensions are given 200 into 12 so this is 200 into 12 for the flange web is 10 into 350 so 10 is the width of the web this is 10 mm and 350 is the height for the web then the overall depth should be 362 so if we add 350 plus 12 that gives us 362 so the diagram is correct now we have to calculate polar mi polar mi is denoted by either we can call it as izz or it is also called as i suffix p polar moment of inertia for this inverted t section now once the data is understood to us let us try to get the solution to this problem so in the solution part first i'll draw again draw the diagram of the t section at this time i'll draw the diagram in a more big form This is the inverted T section and it is symmetric about Y axis. I give the dimensions to it. For the flange, as we have seen, the width is 200 mm. Next, the depth is 12 mm. Then, for the web, the width is 10 mm. And its height is 350 mm. And the overall depth is 362 mm, as we can see here. Now, to calculate the polar moment of inertia, we require both that is Ixx and Iyy values. So for this inverted T section, the first thing we should know is the location of centroid. Now if I can see that, I'll write down since the given inverted T section is symmetric. about y axis so therefore x bar that is the distance of this y axis from the reference y axis this distance is called as x bar and x bar will be half of 200 so that is 100 mm now once we have x bar it is clear that centroid will lie on this axis which is the y axis here but at which height for that we require y bar because on the intersection of y axis and x axis we are going to get the centroid so after x bar i'll say that since the location of centroid with respect to 
x axis is given by y bar is equal to a1 by 1 plus a2 by 2 upon area 1 plus area 2 keeping this as the first equation now here i'll divide the d section which is inverted into two rectangles here we have the first rectangle and this will be the second rectangle next i'll go on calculating the areas so therefore i can directly find out y bar also so in this way i'll say therefore y bar will be now since here we have area 1 a1 will be 200 into 12 that is area of the first rectangle so 200 into 12 into y1 now y1 is the location of x axis for the first rectangle first rectangle its x axis will be exactly at half of 12 so it will be 12 by 2 that is 6 mm plus next area 2 this will be 10 into 350 and y2 value will be since the second rectangle is starting after 12 mm so i'll write down 12 plus half of 350 divided by area 1 which is 200 into 12 plus y1 which is 10 into 350 so from this i will get the value of y bar and it comes out to be 113.37 mm from bottom as we have taken all the references from bottom now i'll even get y bar from top so therefore y bar will be equal to now as the total depth is 350 plus 12 that is 362 so from 362 if i subtract 113.37 i'll get my answer as 248.63 mm from top so here i locate y bar that is the x axis 113.37 mm from bottom so suppose in the diagram it is here y bar is equal to 113.37 mm from bottom and from the top it is 248.63 mm so here we have located the x axis for the t section which was inverted and at the intersection of x and y we will get the centroid so now once we have located the centroid now we can easily calculate the moment of inertia about centroidal x axis and y axis for the t section and finally which is inverted and finally polar moment of inertia which is asked in the question so the next thing would be i'll write down since mi that is moment of inertia about horizontal centroidal axis is given by ix6 is equal to ix61 plus ix62 i'll keep this as equation number second now ix61 will be the moment of inertia for the first rectangle about the centroidal axis so therefore ix61 will be equal to ig1 plus area 1 into h1 square and this is by parallel axis theorem therefore ix61 now why we are using parallel axis theorem is that if we see the x axis for the complete inverted t it lies at 113.37 mm from bottom but the x axis for rectangle 1 
it lies at a distance of 6 mm from bottom so there is some distance between both the axes and this distance is nothing but h1 so as there is difference between the two axes we will use parallel axis theorem to calculate the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis which is of the t inverted t so therefore ig1 is the moment of inertia about horizontal axis that is bd cube by 12 plus area 1 is b into d h1 it will be 113.37 from that i will subtract 6 mm that is this distance at the bottom i'll subtract 6 mm to get h1 so it is 113.37 minus 6 whole square so therefore ixx1 will be equal to now b and d values for the first rectangle b is 200 and d is 12 so 200 into 12 cube divided by 12 plus b into d for the first rectangle b is 200 and d is 12 so it is 200 into 12 into 113.37 minus 6 whole square so finally i'll get ixx1 on calculation of these entire terms my answer is 27.70 into 10 raised to 6 m raised to 4 so this is the mi for the first rectangle about the horizontal centroidal axis similarly i'll calculate it for the second rectangle therefore ixx2 will be ig2 plus area 2 into h2 square and this will be again by parallel axis theorem so therefore ix62 is equal to now again why we are using parallel axis theorem is that if we see in the diagram the x axis for the complete inverted t section is located at 248.63 mm from top but if we see the x axis for rectangle number 2 it will be at half of 350 mm that is 175 mm from top so this is 175 mm from top that is the x axis for the second rectangle and x axis of the complete system is at 248.63 mm so it means there is some distance between both the x axis and that distance is called as h2 so we are using parallel axis theorem therefore ig2 will be bd cube by 12 because that is the moment of inertia about horizontal axis formula for a, for a rectangle plus b into d h2 square now h2 will be 248.63 from that i'll subtract 175 so i'll write it in this way 248.63 minus 350 by 2 that is i'm taking half of 350 so i x is 2 will be equal to here b and d values for the second rectangle b is 10 d is 350 and this will be 248.63 minus 175 whole square so from this i will get the answer of ix62 and it comes out to be 54.70 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 now once we have both the values ix61 and ix62 we can put them in equation number second to get the answer of ix6 so i'll say that therefore put ix61 and ix62 in equation number second so therefore ix6 will be now ix61 it was 27.70 10 raised to 6 ix62 54.70 into 10 raised to 6 on adding up the values i'll get ix6 as 82.40 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 
so this is i x x value now to calculate polar m i we need i y y also so i'll write down therefore moment of inertia for inverted t section about vertical centroidal axis is given by i y y is equal to i y y 1 plus i y y 2 therefore now if we look into the diagram the y axis of complete t inverted t section is located at 100 mm from the reference y axis next y axis of rectangle 1 will also be passing through 100 mm similarly the x the y axis for rectangle number 2 it will also be passing through the same distance it means there is no difference between the y axis like it was there for x axis there were differences in the x axis so we used parallel axis theorem as there is no difference between the y axis so there is no need to use parallel axis theorem so for that we can directly write the formula which is db cube by 12 for the first rectangle plus db cube by 12 for the second rectangle so therefore iyy will be equal to now d and b values for the first rectangle d is 12 b is 200 so 12 into 200 cube divided by 12 plus d and b values for the second rectangle it is d is 350 and b is 10 350 into 10 cube divided by 12 on adding up the values i will get my answer of i y y as it is 8.03 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 now once we have i x x and i y y values so now once we have i x x and i y y values we can calculate the polar moment of inertia so i'll write down therefore polar mi that is polar moment of inertia for given inverted t section is given by polar moment of inertia is denoted by i z z or we can even denote it by i suffix p and that is equal to i x x plus i y y therefore i z z will be equal to i x x value it was 82.40 into 10 raised to 6 plus i y y 8.03 into 10 raised to 6 so on adding up the values i have my final answer as i z z is equal to 90.43 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 so this is the answer now if we look into the question there the question was to find the polar moment of inertia of for this given inverted t section that is izz and izz value we have found out it is 90.43 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 and with this we complete the problem.